What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. I know this is uh, breaking my modus operandi here of uh, waiting five days to a week before my next video comes out. But hey, new year, we're going to try some new things out, like maybe getting out a little bit more content each week. Uh, I'm not going to be one of those videos a day guy kind of guys. Um, I just don't have time for that at the moment. Uh, hey, who knows if I become YouTube famous and this becomes my day job, then you know what? Yeah, sure. Why not? But since I don't see that happening, I'm just going to try to step it up to three, maybe four videos a week as opposed to the two that I've been doing now. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. Uh, we're going to be doing a continuation of Monday's video um, and building on the script that we created on Monday that is using flags. Now I want to touch on one thing. Um, a viewer pointed out in the comments um, that yes, these are not flags. These are are more options. Now I was aware of that, but I tend to use the term flags because when people run scripts or run programs in their terminal, they usually just call dash whatever a flag. Now flags, I believe if you look up the documentation and everything, um, flags are in true form Boolean by default, either they're false or true, and that causes things to go on. But um, in general use and general knowledge, most people just consider what uh, I've got going on here flags. And so that's really why I used the term flags and not options. It's because I wanted people to be familiar with what I was talking about. So that being said, we will cover actual true flags in a later video. I'm going to make kind of a series out of this on how to do things in your bash scripts from using options and arguments and flags to um, adding a help section to uh, maybe even doing a man page. We'll just see how deep we want to get into this. But that's kind of the plans for this video series on actual just the real basics of writing a complete script, um, one that has all the information that your user might need to be able to run it and run it effectively and find any information they need to help them run it. So that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into it. So let's go to workspace two here. And if you recall, this is the script we wrote on Monday. Um, it's just a real basic script um, called flag.sh. And what it did is if you ran flag.sh and gave it the dash a option or flag, it would basically run this mem uh, function right here. That would just show us our memory. If you gave it the B option or B flag, it would run disk and it would show us um, our BTRFS uh, partitions on my system. And if you gave it the C option or flag, it would just print out NeoFetch. So that was just kind of a real brief, real easy introduction to how you go about doing that using the get ops command or get ops shell built in um, in bash. Now I said last time you can look up get opt on the man pages. Well, if you man bash, and then do a search for get ops, plural, uh, G-E-T-O-P-T-S, then it will show up in the bash man page and you can kind of read about it there. So a little bit more information I got from another viewer. So uh, I appreciate that. I won't say your name on camera unless you give me express permission to do that next time you uh, we uh, contact each other. Um, it is somebody I speak with fairly often. He, he places a lot of comments, but I still don't want to use his name unless he actually wants me to. So. That being said, let's go ahead and add on to this script. So what we want to do now is we want to add the option to be able to use arguments with our script. So right now we have the A, B, and C option or A, B, and C flags that we can use. Let's go ahead and add a D option. So if we come over here and just inside these single parentheses, we are going to add a D option. But how, what, let's say with that D option, we want to have an argument that has to be passed. Well, if we want that, all we got to do is add the D and then add a colon on the end of that. So what that says now is with this D option, it is going to be expecting to look for an argument and it should find an argument there. So when we run flag.sh dash D, there needs to be an argument after that. And what kind of argument? Well, for the purpose of this script, we're going to have, we're going to do an input of file name. So what we're going to do here is once we get all that done, all we got to do is we're going to come down here. We are going to add a D option and then we are going to put the semicolons there. And then when we come up here, Actually, no, we'll do this down here in the D because it'll be a little easier this way, I think. Um, so what we're going to do is we're in the D option, right? So we're going to hit enter and we're going to do D value. And then we're going to do equals. And then in double quotes, we're going to put OPT ARG. So that is going to be basically opt argument or option argument. We're going to go ahead and close those parentheses. So we've got now this 
value of opt arg and we're going to hit enter and then we're going to say we want to cat uh, whatever opt arg is that's why i was saying we want to add a file name so that's going to do that. So now what we're going to do is if we give it the D flag, we're going to have to put a file name after it. And then it will actually look for that file and then cat it out to our screen. So now that that's done, nice and simple, we are going to escape. We are going to write and quit. And we are going to clear the screen. <clears throat> so now let's go ahead and run this. So we're going to do flag.sh. And we're going to give it the dash a flag and there we go we have memory so let's go ahead and run it again give it the dash b flag and that gives us our file system we're going to run it again give it the dash c flag we're going to hit enter that gives us neo fetch let's clear the screen and now let's give it the dash d flag but let's not give it an argument now you can see right here option requires an argument dash dash d so basically We'll make a help page here in a second to kind of give the user an idea of what to do, but let's go ahead and do D and do dot input RC. So now we have flags, flag dot SH dash D option and we have dot input RC. So what should happen now is when I hit enter, it should give us my dot input RC file cat it out to the terminal. And there we go. So now that did, it took the D option, the argument of dot input RC and it cats that file out to um, to the terminal. So let's go ahead and go back into flag.sh and let's come down here and how about we do we want to figure out a way to let the person know that they need to add um add an argument so let's try let's go like this let's do star we're gonna hit enter and then we're gonna do echo and we're gonna say script requirements and then we are going to put um, let's do base name actually we don't want that double quote there let's do base name um, and then do dollar sign zero we're going to close that up and then we're going to say options and we're going to say dash a dash b dash c and dash d and we're going to say with a file name. And then we're going to close that out. And then we're going to put those. And then we're going to semicolon. And now if we write, so basically what this is going to do is this should echo script requirements for this script. And it should give us the options there so that people know what to do when they run this script. If they don't give the correct flag or give the correct option. So... Let's go ahead and write and quit. Let's clear the screen. Let's run flag.sh and let's not give it a flag at all. So now we got nothing, right? So now what if we do dash R? So now we get illegal option. We get script requirements, options dash A, dash B, dash C, and dash D with file name. What happens if we go dash D, but we don't give it a file name? Option D requires an argument, gives you the script requirements again right here and tells you what that argument is that D requires. Um, so now we know that that works. So if somebody comes in and they give it a wrong flag or they um, uh, don't put an argument in, we know it's going to warn them and it's going to kind of print out what they need to do. Now let's go ahead and add a help. So let's go back into uh, flag.sh. And let's actually add an H for help flag. So let's go into insert mode and right up here after the colon, we're going to add H. And then we're going to come down here and we are going to add the H section. And then basically what we're going to do is I am just going to be lazy and I am going to copy this and we are going to yank and we're going to paste. 
And so after that, so now we have the requirements. So the same thing, and then we're gonna hit enter and we're gonna do right. So now we have, let's go ahead and write and quit. So now we have the H option. We added the H option up here to the list of options and we added it down here in our case statement. We're gonna write and quit. Now we are going to do, let's clear the screen and run flag.sh and we're gonna give it the H for help. And we're going to hit enter, and right there we get script requirements. Options are the A flag, the B flag, the C flag, and then a D flag with the file name. So let's vim back into um, flag.sh and go back over this a little bit. So basically what we do is we have our uh, functions right up here that we created for our first three options, A, B, and C. We have those listed right here, A, B, and C, using the get ops built in. Um, and we have those stored as option. And so in, then we have a case statement that says for wh whatever option you choose, A, B, or C, it's going to run either M, mem, disk, or sys, which is going to be the free, the DF, or the NeoFetch command. If we give it the D option now, we have the D added with the, with the colon after it. If we give the D option, it's going to expect an argument to be passed along with it. So in this case, a file. And then we also have the H option, which is going to print out a little bit of help for the user to actually see what's going on. And we also have the star here that basically prints out the same as the help command if they don't use the correct flag or if they don't use an argument with the D command or with the D option. So basically, um, in this instance, everything looks good from this end. So let's go ahead and quit out of there and let's see what happens if we try to run all the flags at once. So we are going to run, except for the H flag, of course, we won't run the help, but let's do dash A, dash B, dash C, dash D. Let's give it the dot input RC. And what should happen now is I should get a line printed out with the mem function. I should get a line printed out with the disk function. I should get a line print it out or it should print NeoFetch and then it should actually cat out my uh, .input RC. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. It did all of them. So we have the mem line right here. They're kind of jumbled up because um, there's no spaces between them. We've got the mem line, the file system, we have um, NeoFetch, and then we have that file catted out. Well, let's go ahead and pretty that up a little bit. So let's vim back into flag.sh and we can just do this real quick if we do like... Um, Let's add to these functions here. If we do print F and then a new line, and then same thing here, print F, new line, and then same thing here, print F, new line. Now we are going to write and quit. Let's clear the screen and let's run that again with all of them. Now you can see we have a bit of a break between them. So we have mem and then we got a space and then we have file system and we got a space and then we have NeoFetch and then a space and then we cat out the file at the end. So let's jump back into flag.sh and just kind of cover that one more time. So we've got our functions up here that run. We have our case statement down here with our options and our help and our um, error that goes if you don't have the correct flags or anything. Um, so yeah, a um, little bit more added on to that. Uh, we will do some more, like I said, in another video, um, going over maybe if you have multi-line arguments or excuse me, multi, uh, multi-word arguments or something like that. There's a little more you got to do on those, but uh, we'll cover those in the next video. Um, so I hope you, uh, actually found this interesting or useful and you can get some help with this or get some use out of this, I should say. And I appreciate you guys taking your time to watch my channel. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week, and man, just stay safe. All right. God bless.